three different sets of charges a few minutes ago, correct? Correct. One from 2000, April of 2013, one from October of 2013, and one from uh, February of 2014? Correct. correct. And um, uh, you indicated that you, in fact, have been to court periodically uh, represented by Mr. Pickering. Correct. And um, do you recall being in court on September 4th of 2014 with Mr. Pickering? Uh, every time I've been to court, it's been with Pickering. So. Okay. And do you see the uh, docket numbers on the face of this transcript? Yes. And do those correspond to the docket numbers on the cases that we were just looking at? Yes, they do. And uh, the occasion of your visit to the court on September 4, 2014, was to see if uh, you were going to accept or reject a plea agreement that had been transmitted to you and your attorney by the uh, Connecticut State's attorney. Is that right? Correct. And at that time, you told the judge that you chose to reject that plea agreement. Correct. Correct? Now, um, um, when you talk on the telephone, uh, you're aware that those telephone calls are recorded. Is that right? Correct. And is it true that um, on September 6, 2014, you expressed the hope to the person you were talking to that the plea deal was going to get better? Correct, I believe so. And that was two days after you had rejected the state's attorney's offer on September 4th? Correct. That's all, thank you. Sir, the questions by Mr. Rankin just now, that deals with the Connecticut State Attorney, is that right? Correct. Okay, and that's unrelated to your testimony here today, is that true? Correct. You don't have any pending charges in Massachusetts, do you? To my knowledge, no. Okay, and there's no plea deal or any of that in Massachusetts, is there? No, not to my knowledge. So you were also asked some questions about whether you had ever said anything about the gun you had seen in Florida. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And, sir, do you remember being called to the grand jury on uh, July 17th? The grand jury investigating the uh, death, uh, the homicide of Odin Lloyd. Do you remember being called to that? Yes. Do you remember whether you were asked questions about your trip to Florida? I believe I was asked questions about Okay, and did you, do you remember giving testimony about, and again, this would have been um, approximately one month after the, uh, the death of Odin Lloyd, uh, so on July 17th of 2013? Do you recall being asked questions about whether you saw a fire or, or did something happen in Florida? Well, I object to that, Your Honor. Okay, let me rephrase that if I could. What page, Mr. I, I, I beg your pardon, page 69, please. Mayor, that interview that you were being asked about, that, this was long before um, you, you had, uh, long before the interview you had testified at the grand jury? Yes. Okay. And at that time you were asked, what did you, um, something that had happened in... Um, Objection, Robert. You were at a hotel room in Florida. Do you remember giving testimony about that? I don't recall if I testified okay. there or not. Yeah, we come to come in. Yes.
May, Your Honor. And, sir, at the time of the grand jury on July 17, 2013, a month after the death of Odin Lloyd, did you give testimony under oath that um, while you were down in Florida, you saw Aaron Hernandez with a gun? Answer, yes, I did see a gun. Question, and when did you see the gun? Answer, it was in the, the first room where we went to from the airport inside of that hotel room. There was a gun there. Remember that? Yes. And you recall then uh, describing the gun, being asked question, what color was that? This is at page 69. You indicated it was a black colored gun. Yes. And you recall then being asked about, do you know, uh, this is at line, si line I'm sorry, line 16. Do you know whether, yeah. I'm sorry, same page, 69. <laughs> Do you know whether that was a semi-automatic or a revolver? Answer, no idea. Question, okay, answer, I mean, I did see a gun. And then um, your answer continued. Oh, was it a revolver? Question, yes. Answer, no, it wasn't a revolver. Question, what was it? What kind of gun was it? Answer, it was, had to be a semi-automatic because it didn't have a hammer in the back of it. Question, and did you make some observation about a certain portion of the gun, like the top part of the gun? Answer, oh yeah, plastic, Glock. I'm thinking it was a Glock when I saw it from on the bed. Do you remember making those statements uh, at the grand jury? Yes. And that was before the interview that Mr. Rankin had questioned you about a few minutes ago. Is that true? Correct. Now, sir, with regard to uh, Papu, you were asked questions about by Mr. Rankin about whether you had ever mentioned Papu prior to um, December 9th, I believe, of uh, 2014. Is that right? Correct. And on that date, is it fair to say you did meet with Trooper Benson, myself, and Mr. Bomberg? Yes. And at that time, did you bring s something to our attention about seeing a photograph somewhere? Yes, I did. Okay. And what well, photograph, Your Honor? We come to save our place. Sir, in December, uh, when we met, did you bring something to uh, our attention? Yes. Had you seen something that caused you to bring that to our attention? Yes. What was that? I saw uh, the news flash, and I saw... Well, object to that, Your Honor. Overall. Maybe Mr. McCauley can lead the witness. Sir, did you see a picture? Of somebody. Yes, I did. And was it in some form of uh, media? Yes, it was. And did you recognize that person? Yes, I did. And who did you recognize that person to be? Oscar Hernandez or Papu. Okay. And I previously had showed you um, Exhibit 393. Is that the individual you yeah. recognize? Yes. And as a result of that, did you bring that to our attention? I believe so, yes. And um, 
how long before um, we met had you seen that picture in some form of uh, media? I, I don't think I ever saw the picture prior to that. His, okay. This picture, that oh, picture. Okay, but when did you first see the picture is my question. Uh, on the news it said he was convicted. Okay. Uh, uh, it's the same that and so it's stricken, should we disregard it? Okay, so, so, so just... On the news. But, but, okay, on the news, but prior to our meeting, had you seen that picture on the news? Oh, you mean before the last meeting that we had? Yes, the last time that we met with each other. Yes. Okay. Prior to that date, had you seen the picture of um, Oscar Hernandez or Papu? Yes, prior to that okay. meeting. And you, uh, my question was just, do you remember how long before our meeting had you seen that picture? Uh, not exactly, but not that long before the meeting. Okay. And, and had we seen each other before that or um, b before those times, or was that your first opportunity to share that information? That was the first opportunity I was given to express that to you. And, sir, um, Mr. Rankin had also asked you about a question. Apparently, at some point, you were questioned by an attorney or attorneys about whether you're, you were or have been in the past a marijuana dealer. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And how long ago was that? Just um, is that some number of months? Repeat it. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. When he was asking you about, did some some lawyers ask you some questions about being a marijuana deal? Do you just do you remember that the date of that um, occasion? Exact date, no. Okay. Can you give us your best estimate in terms of how long ago was that? When lawyers? It, yes, just you. when lawyers. Just. Do you recall that? Let me ask it this way. Do you recall being some number of months ago, three, four, five months ago? Yes, a number of months ago, yes. Okay, but do you, do you know whether it was in 2015, meaning sometime after the new year or just prior to the new year in 2014? I believe it was prior to the new year. Okay. Do you recall whether it was within just a couple of months? I'm just trying to gauge from today how far, how long ago was that? Prior to the new year, I mean, I don't know exactly. Do you think it's been in the last six months? I'm a little lost. The, the oh, okay, if I could have a moment. December 16th. Okay, do you remember that being December 16th, 2014? When? Well, the, the question Mr. <coughs> Rankin had showed you, that it had asked you about had you uh, ever dealt marijuana, and you indicated that Despite what it said, you, you disagreed with what was written. Prior to that date, I had indicated before that I was a marijuana dealer. Oh, oh okay, but just if you, if you would. Um, I'm going to extract that question. Yes, sir. Sure. Hey, yes, sure. we ask you a question. Okay, mm -hmm. please, if you would just answer my question first. On December 16th, yes or no, were you questioned? December 16, 2014, Mr. Um, you were questioned by certain, um, some lawyers, just yes or no? Yes, I was. Okay. And Mr. Rankin had at, uh, pointed you to a particular question about whether, in fact, you were uh, a marijuana dealer. Is that right? That's right. Uh, let's, why don't you read the question if you're going to. Yeah. Okay. Start at the bottom of the, the preceding page. Okay, and I'm just going to um, this. That's where I started. Okay, thank you. At page 28, did you ever provide Aaron Hernandez with marijuana? Your answer, answer, I have smoked with Aaron Hernandez before. I've never been his marijuana provider. No, sir. Question, you've previously testified that you were a marijuana dealer. However, answer correct. Is that right? Yes, that's what the record Okay. And in fact, you had testified previously at a... Um, at a grand jury hearing back in October of 2013, 
about being a marijuana dealer. Is that right? Correct. In fact, you were asked, and this is at page 143. Um, question, <coughs> you dealt marijuana? Answer, yes. Question, and is it fair to say that you, that, that was, you made a profit from dealing marijuana? Answer, yes. Question, you made at least a decent amount of money to be able to, and for instance, as a grand juror asked, support yourself when you go places with Aaron Hernandez? Answer, oh yes. Yes. So I'm just um, holding Exhibit 184 and just going to ask you, this item that I'm holding, is this similar or dissimilar to the silver gun that you described seeing in the lockbox in the basement of the defendant's home? Dissimilar. I'm sorry? Dissimilar. Dissimilar. Okay. Dissimilar in what way, sir? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, returning to the subject of the uh, selling marijuana or furnishing marijuana to Mr. Hernandez, you attend a meeting with <coughs> McCauley, Mr. Bomberg, and Trooper Benson on December 9. Is that right? Correct. And in that meeting, you say Alexander Bradley admitting to selling marijuana to Aaron Hernandez. Correct? Correct. December 9, 2014. Right? Yes. I have a question. Is that the... Well, can I see the document, please? <coughs> see the date? December 9, 2014? Yes. Yes. And you told them you admitted to selling marijuana to Aaron Hernandez on yes. December 9. Yes. And then a week later, December 16, 2014, correct? Correct. Same place. Same place. You said you were asked, did you ever provide Aaron Hernandez with marijuana? And your answer was, I've smoked with Aaron Hernandez before. I've never been his marijuana provider. No, sir. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Now, on redirect examination, did you testify that you don't have any charges pending in Massachusetts? 
I said to the best of my knowledge, I don't have any charges pending in Massachusetts. Judge, can I come to sidebar? So, so uh, you testified in response to a question from Mr. McCauley that there was nothing pending against you in Massachusetts. Yes, I don't, don't believe there is anything pending against me. Do you recall that in uh, January of 2013, you were arrested for uh, operating under the influence of alcohol? Yes, I do recall. And uh, that case was continued for a period of time? Yes. And then uh, you were found in violation of your probation? That's news to me. And a warrant was issued for your arrest? If that's what the record says. Want to take a look at it? That is your record, correct? Correct. And it shows that on October 24, 2013, you were found in violation of probation, VOP. I don't believe been found in violation. There was a notice, right? Objection sustained. That there was a notice of a violation of probation on October 24, 2013? Oh, uh, yes, that's what the record says. And a warrant was issued for your arrest? <clears throat> yes, that's what the record says. And uh, this, was, uh, this record is current as of March 30th, 2015? Correct. Yesterday? Mm -hmm. 
And, and that's uh, in Quincy, Massachusetts. Is that right? Correct. Thank you. Sir, just with regard to that charge, had you already admitted uh, what they call sufficient facts to that charge back in two, uh, sometime in 2013? Yes. And that charge was prior to this matter. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And as a result of your current charges, you were held in Connecticut, and sometime after that, that record shows they issued you a notice of violation. Yes, that's what okay. the record shows. And you're finding this out today. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Can I just talk to counsel about scheduling issues? <coughs> Since we started late, I didn't take a, a morning uh, break. Um, I believe uh, we should, we're, we're going to be stopping at 1, so unless anyone needs a, a break, we're going to call the next witness. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Robert Reset, please. Testimony would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Continue, Judge. May I inquire? You may. Sir, please state your name for the record. Robert Rosette. And spell that last name, please. R-A-C-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. <clears throat> Sir, how old are you? Forty. And did you grow up in this area? I did. <clears throat> Describe, please, if you could, for the jury, your educational background. Uh, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in cardiopulmonary sciences in 1997 from Northeastern. I, uh, after doing that for a few years, decided to do a job change, so I went and got my associates in computer science from Quincy, graduating in 2001. Furthering my education, I got my master's in computer science in uh, 2012. And where was the master's from? Boston University. Um, with regards to work in the field of uh, computers. When did you first begin to work in the field of computers? 2001. And where was that? Partners Healthcare. What did you do for Partners Healthcare? My initial position was as a uh, help desk analyst, basically receiving phone calls when uh, issues arrived from the user, uh, user community. From there, I progressed onto the server team, uh, both using the what they, what they determined uh, open systems, which is Unix, Linux, OpenVMS. Those are just different operating systems and then over to Windows. Okay. Um, within sort of the realm of computers, what was your specialty at that time? Sort of what kind of work with computers? Uh, we mainly, mainly worked on servers, building them, connecting them to the network here, troubleshooting them here, setting them up for the user community. All right. Just to simplify a little bit, what is a server? Oh, a, ser <laughs> a server is just basically a... Uh, a super powerful computer that provides services to other other computers and it provides services to other computers through what through the network and did you do work with the network as well uh, we connected them to the network configured them to connect to the network here and when you say we I'm sorry you specifically I, yeah did? I did that how long did you do that job 
I was there from 2001 until 2006. And who did you work for in 2006? I took a job down at uh, a iMedia Technology on the Cape, and they provided IT services to small businesses. What is IT? Oh, information technology. And what did you do for them specifically? It depended on the customer here. We did anything from setting up, again, servers, setting up a network, performing backups, troubleshooting issues, any, anything that they asked, we did. Um, when you say we, those are things I'm sorry, that you I, specifically did? Yes. How long did you work for them? Uh, down my work, it was about a nine-month period there that I worked for iMedia Technology. And when did you come to work for us? 2007. What do you do for the district attorney's office? I, uh, I'm an IT director, so anything um, with the local area network is um, my responsibility. Uh, that includes computers, printers, phones, cell phones. It's my responsibility on the, I, on the information technology side. On the demonstrative evidence side, it is something as simple as copying disks, printing pictures, creating maps, uh, as far, and as far as going to um, video redactions, audio redactions, any issues with digitized video, digi digital evidence that may arise, that's all in our respons my responsibility. So just going back to the information technology side, the district attorney's office has a network. Absolutely. And where does that network sort of cover? Uh, it covers the Bristol County, which is Alboro, uh, Taunton, Fall River, New Bedford. How many sites do we have? We have uh, eight sites. And by sites, what in your mind are you are building. distinguishing? Um, and how many server locations? We have four server locations. You, you, met, you mentioned telephone <coughs> systems as well. Absolutely. Um, how is that within your jurisdiction? Uh, they are, they, we have IP phones as well as regular standard phones here, so that falls under my jurisdiction. Um, what is an IP phone? Oh, um, it means internet protocol. Basically, talks to the network the same way a computer does, compared to the old standard phones, which is just copper lines. Um, now, you were, you were talking about the demonstrative <coughs> evidence side. Uh, is that in relation to cases? Absolutely. How long have you done that part of your job? Since 2007. And with regards to that particular part of your job, um, how many times have you come across uh, requirements or requests from ADAs having to do with DVRs? The, the actual export or actually going to a physical DVR? Either. Uh, Either. How many times have you worked with a DVR over the, the course of your time with our office? The actual physical DVR is probably about a dozen. And with regards to DVRs, what have you been asked to do in the past? Uh, usually it's to go get some, vid go get some uh, video from them. And I guess what I would say is why, why is that something that you're asked to do? Do you know? I think it's because it's somewhat computer related. Um, and with regards to a DVR, um, how, do you, how do you normally go about accessing the DVR? Uh, typically we go to the customers, the, the incident location site, we talk, you know, we talk to the manager. The manager has always been spoken to by the ADA. And then I'll, they'll lead us into the back room and we'll uh, log in with, them, at the, with uh, them there, the owners there. Now, turning your attention to the summer of 2013, um, did you become involved in working with the particular DVR in this case? I did. Okay. And can you describe your first contact with that DVR? What, what were you required to do? My first contact with the DVR was... Uh, my first actually contact with the DVR was actually replacing the hard drive in it. Um, and do you remember when that was? That was in August of 2013. Now, specifically with <coughs> reference to what is enabled as exhibits 151 and 150, is that 151? Is that the particular hard drive that you replaced on that particular date? It is. And so the hard drive inside of 150 is the actual one that you began to work with in 2013? That is correct. Um, can you describe for the jury uh, what you did to sort of understand this particular DVR? I logged in. The uh, uh, interface is very intuitive. It's not anything I haven't seen before. 
it's a simplified menu. You have five options, um, so it was very came very natural to just operate it. So let me slow it down a little bit again. Okay. Uh, when you logged in, did you use a mouse? Yes. The particular mouse that you use with this system, is it a standard mouse? Standard mouse. Does it have a sort of a generic name for that type of mouse? Just a USB mouse. Okay, and what is USB? <laughs> it's the interface, it basically uh, the little slot you'll see in the front here, if you, if you mind. Right here, that's a, that's a USB uh, port. And that's a, that's a standard kind of port? Absolutely, you've seen on all computers and everything else. And um, did you have a cord to power it up at that time? I did. Um, <clears throat> and when you powered it up, did you plug it all? Also, did you have to plug it into a screen? Well, we did, yes. How I do did. you do that? Uh, there are two ports. Uh, there are two options available. You can do HDMI or VGA. Okay. What, which, are, what are those groups of letters? Oh, it's uh, v, they're just standard uh, output ports for monitors. Which one did you choose? Uh, at the North Outer Bus, we were using HDMI. And here in court, which one do you use? VGA. Is there a substantial difference between the output using either of those? Uh, HDMI is more high definition, but we don't have that option in this courtroom. Um, can you actually tell the difference when you look at the screen? Uh, it's negligible. Um, if he might, Your Honor, could he uh, plug the system in at this point? Just so the jury understands, what did you just do to sort of set the system up, Mr. Reset? Oh, uh, the order actually does not matter which way, which way you plug it in. The order I did was I put the monitor in first, then I plugged in uh, the power cord, and then I plugged in the, the USB mouse. But the system will boot up without a mouse or without a monitor. Okay. Uh, those beeps that we're hearing now in court, is that normal? The, those are normal beeps. And, sir, um, on the screen now is a series of boxes. Is that what you saw when you first started to work with the system? Yes, it is. And what is that that we're looking at? Though that is a 4x4 four four grid I indicating each channel that may have been, um, that may have been uh, a camera attached to it. And how do you get from this particular screen into the menu to choose a camera? You uh, right-click on the mouse. And that's brought something up. That particular menu that it brought up right there, what is that? That is what they call a shortcut menu. Okay. And what do you do with that shortcut menu? From here, uh, I would typically go to search here because we were looking for uh, to, to look at the data, look at the video. Okay. <clears throat> what do you do then? So once you click on, once you left click on search here, up comes the login box. Okay. With regards to the login box, <clears throat> what name do you choose? You click on the drop down menu and I've always uh, chose admin. And what's password. the password you're putting in? is admin. And I see that it's, it's hidden there. That particular password that you're chosen, how did you know that that was the password for the system? It is, uh, it is the default, it's the default account on the system. Okay. And then you hit okay? Correct. What are we looking at here, sir? This is what they call the search window. <laughs> okay. So looking at this particular search window, let's go through the different areas of the screen. The large black box is what? Where the, uh, the, where the video will be displayed. And the sort of calendar thing over there, what do you use that for? The dates. The dates for what? For what date, what date you're looking for the video. Okay. The video may be present. So how do you go to June of 2013? Click on the drop down, choose your month, click in here, and type, uh, left click each, each digit to correspond to the year. Okay. <clears throat> now I see that it's come up with three 
sort of light green boxes within the calendar screen, what, what does that indicate? That indicates that there is video present on those dates. Okay. So when you, when you see that there's video present on those particular dates, how do you kind of get to that video? Click on whatever day you'd like here. So when you click on the 17th. All right. Now, when you did that, the bottom of the screen turns light green. Correct. What does that indicate? That there is video, video present for these uh, four <coughs> cameras in this box over here. All right, so let's go to that section of the screen. You were just indicating four boxes sort of below the calendar area, uh, and then you indicate something to do with the cameras. What, what is that section of the screen with regards to the cameras? The, this indicates the time. So zero being midnight, 24 being midnight the following day. Okay. And, but the cameras that you just had, um, I see one, two, three, four in those boxes. Correct. How do you choose a particular camera? You can click on the drop down and choose any camera you'd like. Okay. And how do you sort of, if you only want to look at one camera, how do you make it only look at one camera? Click on this tab right here. Okay. That's the leftmost tab within the camera section? <coughs> Correct. All right. Now let's sort of bring up um, any particular camera. Okay. Now the part on the bottom that's, that's bright green you described as the time. Correct. But how do you find the time down to the minute? So if you, when you choose the, the camera, then you can click on the date, and you'll see that uh, the time is just a random click. You can get it more granular by clicking on the, one of these buttons down here. Click on 30 minutes, is as granular as you're going to get it. OK. So those buttons in the bottom right-hand corner change the nature of that green bar with the time on it to be sort of more narrowed in? 30-minute window, one-hour window, two-hour window, 24-hour uh, window. Okay. And then how do you go about actually playing video on the screen? Once you click in, the video will start playing automatically. If you want to pause, click right over here. If you want to start it up again, click the same button. Um, Backing up for a second, um, when you say you clicked somewhere and the video just sort of started, where did you click to, to do that? It depends, it depends on the time you're looking for. So I, I understand that, but you said that the video just sort of started up. Did you click on the green line to do that? Correct. Okay. And if you wanted to stop it, where would you, where would you click? The uh, square button right here. To the right are two arrows with lines next to them pointing in different directions. What do those do? Do you know? Yes, the one to obviously point to the left goes backwards, backwards per frame. The one to the right goes forwards per frame. Okay. Um, what is the, the little, looks like a little person next to it. What does that do? It, uh, it will actually, uh, it will go towards the next time there is motion within, the, um, within this camera. Okay. And then to the right of that, what do those two things do? Uh, audio, but there is no audio present on this. Is there any audio for any of the particular <coughs> camera locations there that you've is seen? There is Now, if you just sort of pause that or even turn off the particular screen, thank you. Um, what was the first thing that you, uh, you did with the actual uh, video system itself once you first started working with it in the summer of 2013? Uh, after replacing the hard drive, there was a uh, request um, from Defense for a Windows compatible copy. So I logged into the machine and uh, used the backup function within the machine to export all the cameras for the, for that for the June 16th to June 19th. Okay. Um, when you say you use the backup function, yep. what does that mean? So again, if you right click on the window here, you go to main menu, backup is right here. And what does that produce? What that will do is it will, it will output all the video data onto a hard, uh, an external hard drive okay. in a proprietary format. Um, okay. What's a proprietary format? It means it, it, means it uh, can be read by this machine here and ad, as well as an external player provided by the machine. And the external player is sort of wrapped around the data, around the video itself? Correct. The, the external player will be able to play that, that particular, those particular files. And then you said that could play on Windows machines. Why is that significant? Uh, that's significant because that, that's what was requested. I mean, <laughs> well, just in general, a regular computer, uh, what you kinds of operating systems do they use? Windows, Macs, uh, Linux to a, to a lesser extent. 
So just in general, by exporting it, you can put it onto a, uh, a computer. A computer that everyone, that everyone uses every day. Okay. Now, in the fall of 2014, did you again return to the DVR and start working with it again? Correct. Okay. And at that particular point in time, you had the export copy that could be played on Windows, but could you um, make segments from that, sort of cut down the time? No, I could not. Okay. So what did you do to be able to go from uh, the exported copy to uh, a version that you could sort of make pieces of? I used the uh, screen capturing program called Movavi that would um, basically grab what, what is 30 frames per second here, which is a standard viewing for a standard definition, standard definition television that would make, uh, convert it essentially to an uh, open format. Okay. Is open format sort of the opposite of proprietary format? Correct. All right, what's open format? Open format means that you, you know, it can be played in the, put into our, what I was hoping to do is put into the Adobe Premiere Pro, which is our editing software. Okay. So how did you go about um, getting the, the video from the proprietary player on Windows mm -hmm. through Movavi and out? How, what did you actually do? So I launched the player, selected the file I was interested in, using Movavi, selected that, that area of the window, hit record, hit play, and then real time it would, it would uh, play and I would, it would capture 30 frames per second. Okay. Once you did that, how did you know that what you captured was a true and accurate copy of what was playing? I watched everything. Um, you watched all of the video itself? I did. And did you watch them both side by side? Both of them side by side. And what did you find? That they were true and accurate copy of each other. Now, how many cameras did, were actually um, displaying video on the system? Eleven. All right. And was there a way to identify which one, when you were either running the system or running the exported copy, you were working with? Absolutely, yes. And what was that? How did you, you know, in other words, how are they identified within the system? Uh, when, you, when you did the backup, they would actually have the camera number within the file name. Okay. So, um, just so we can run through this quickly, mm -hmm. where is camera one? Uh, let's just do this here. So we'll camera one is right here, is, uh, upper left hand corner. Okay, so I just want to note that um, you had a multi-view there. Can I you did. kind of go back to the multi-view? How did you bring that up with all of those cameras on the screen at the same time? Uh, the the fourth uh, fourth one, uh, option right here. Okay, and can you play them all at once? You can. And if you play them all at once, um, are they playing the same system time? The analog cameras will definitely play at, at the same system time. The digital, the digital cameras tend to uh, skip ahead due to um, what was noted as drop frames. Okay. And the skipping ahead only on the digital cameras, is that something that occurs on the original DVR? It is. And was it maintained sort of throughout the copying process so you always saw it? Absolutely. And did it change at all in terms of how much it skipped or whether it, sort of things were put back at all? The skipping was, was uh, inconsistent here. You could never tell when, it was, when uh, a particular camera, digital camera, was going to drop a frame. Right. But through the copying process, in other mm -hmm. words, if you look at the DVR at a particular skip, you look at the exported copy at a particular skip, and you look at the final uh, Movavi produced copy, would the skip be the same, that particular skip be the same throughout the process? Absolutely. Now. Um, the particular camera we were just working with there, camera one, can you make that large again? Where is that? That is the uh, playroom above the garage. Um, throughout the video that you watched, is it, is it sort of mislabeled as front door? It is. Um, and the particular camera here, is this an analog or a digital camera? Th this is an analog camera. So with regards to the time and date on the top um, of the screen, where does that time and date 
come from? That comes from the system. Okay. And does that match the green bar time? It does. Okay. Could you go to camera two? Your Honor, I'm just going to go through each of the cameras. Does your, your court? Yeah. Minutes, minutes one. Um, we, uh, okay. Based on what counsel tell me, I anticipate tomorrow will be an early day that we'll, we probably will stop before one, but I can't uh, promise that. Uh, please uh, keep an open mind. Please continue to avoid anything at all about this case or Mr. Hernandez that could appear in any newspaper or television or radio or magazine or any other form of media. Um, please avoid anything that could be in any form of social media, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere else. Please continue to avoid uh, speaking, emailing, texting, or in any fashion communicating uh, with anybody at all, uh, friend, family member, coworker, anybody, each other. Um, and if anyone starts to talk to you about your jury service or Mr. Hernandez or this case, um, please end any kind of communication immediately. Uh, please do not do any research about this case or Mr. Hernandez or anything that you think could in any way be relevant to the case. We'll see you tomorrow morning. He, he, he. All persons having anything further to do before the Honorable, the Justice E. Susan Gosh of the Superior Court, now sitting at Four River within and for the Commonwealth, depart and give your attendance here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., to which time and place the sitting of this court is now adjourned. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Court is now adjourned.